Hi everybody. I'd like to present to you my opinions based on facts of the recent Supreme Court decision ostensibly allowing all corporations, both national and foreign, to contribute as much as they want to any national election campaign. This decision spells disaster for our democratic political system, hammers yet another nail into the lid of the coffin of our freedoms and rights, and it causes me to wonder as to the sanctity of the Supreme Court. I hesitate to state it here, but let me tell you, I'm thinking, who's buying the court? Folks, this is not the only time in history that we have had this immense, immediate, inherent danger to our government. Here are some other people who've recognized in the past the extreme danger that corporations pose to our democratic form of government. Thomas Jefferson had a great deal to say about big business and corporations. Quote, the selfish spirits of commerce knows no country and feels no passion or principle but that of gain. And that's in a letter to Larkin Smith in 1809. And Jefferson also had this important thing to say in a letter to George Logan in 1816. He said, I hope we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations, which dare already to challenge our government to a trial of strength and bid defiance to the laws of our country. It is unfortunate that that didn't take, and that no one learned their lesson. Jefferson also had a great idea about what to do with our Supreme Court. Maybe it's time for a change to the current one. In a letter to James Pleasance in 1821, he said, A better remedy, I think, and indeed the best I can devise, would be to give future commissions to judges for six years, the senatorial term, with a reappointability by the President, with the approbation of both houses, that of the House of Representatives imports a majority of citizens, that of the Senate a majority of the states, and that of both a majority of the three sovereign departments of the existing government, to wit, of its executive and legislative branches. Maybe it's time for a change, eh? Hello boys and girls and welcome. My topic tonight is driving and I've got so much to say that this will probably be in several parts. Oh yeah, I've got a lot to say about driving and most of it isn't good. First of all, the road, it's mine. Why do I say that? Because the rest of you out there, well, with the exception of the Top Gear crowd, a few NASCAR drivers and some Formula One guys just cannot drive. If it rains? You go either too slow or too fast. If it snows, same thing. It's like the weather turns off a secret switch in your brain and you just don't know how to drive. Let's address the most distressing thing ever, that people have gotten lazy. When you change lanes, you're supposed to use your bloody turn signal! I am not a mind reader, and I can't discern which direction your car is going to turn in just by concentrating on your brain waves. Think about it. Folks, the turn signal is not all the way in the back seat, where you might have to climb over sleeping children, slobbering pets, or old candy wrappers. Neither is it in the glove compartment. Where is it? Well, of all the inconveniences, there it is, one inch from the tip of your index finger. You know, the index finger attached to the hand, which should be on the wheel next to the signal lever? Okay, maybe I'm a little heavy on the sarcasm, but I have to know. Are you really all that lazy, or do you really want to have numerous car crashes, injuries, and the likely raising of your insurance rates?
Ah, uh, go on. I don't have to use my turn signal. That's just for babies. I'm fine without it. Okay, you can see why it is that I feel the road is mine. Okay, you can join me if you promise to use your turn signal. Beautifully relaxing, energizing, renewing. All parks do that for us, the people who enjoy and depend upon them. But how often do we think of the history of the parks we know and love? This is a story of one of those parks, Central Park in Schenectady, New York. City of Schenectady, a translation of Mohawk Indian for place beyond the Pine Plains, is nestled in a crook of an elbow of the Mohawk River, approximately 13 miles from New York State's capital, Albany. In the heart of the city lies the green oasis that is Central Park. The park is comprised of 843 acres and includes a duck pond, swimming pool, and lake, among other attractions. But this gem of a park didn't just appear out of thin air. It came about through vision and hard work, through controversy and determination. 